it takes a lot of people to put an export together. You have truckers and veterinarians and USDA vets and quarantine facilities and um, cattle producers, a buyer, a seller. You know, it's a it's a little community of people that puts that, that this puts together, and I'm kind of the orchestrator. She recently arranged a shipment to Ecuador. This relationship between the two countries could result in tens of thousands of cattle sold over the next three years. A boom to U.S. cattle ranchers. But the process of getting these international deals done can be daunting. The political challenges, um, but I'm going to put that probably at the top, <laughs> is challenging. Bureaucracy can be challenging. Politics, wars. I've, I've lost deals with wars. You know, war breaks out, there went the deal. Got to wait until they're done throwing over the government. You know, those kind of things happen. We have the importing country and government officials there, and we have our government officials here. These people at the end of the day want to make it happen. They have a job they have to do. They've got some boxes they've got to check. Renee sometimes finds herself making groundbreaking deals with countries that have very volatile relations with the U.S. government, which can make negotiations pretty tricky. You know, Pakistan has been the most challenging market to open, and I've been blessed. I've, I've actually kind of opened several markets. I sent um, the first U.S. cattle into Oman. I sent the first U.S. cattle into Ecuador in many, many years, just recently. Um, Pakistan, that's the first U.S. cattle, I can't say ever, but at least I think her, I heard 68 years. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm blazing some trails there, which is making it very easy for the other exporters to come on in. That's great. It's, you know, there's enough business for everybody.